Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So after all the crazy playability I tested a couple of weeks ago on the Rhombus Ripple, it's time to bring things back a little bit closer to Earth this week with the brand new Selkirk Vanguard Pro Invicta. It's interesting because obviously Selkirk makes some extremely popular paddles like the Lux Control Airs, the Vanguard Power Airs, but in terms of actually following trends in this sport, they seem to always be a little bit late to the party. It took them forever to release a retail raw carbon face paddle, which we got with the Vanguard controls that were good, but nothing to write home about. And now we're finally getting raw carbon and thermo formed with this paddle. Now you might be thinking, okay, well it's not 2022 anymore, that's old news. But you can also probably tell just by looking at this thing that there is a little bit more to it than that. But before we get into any of that, let me remind you that any of the paddles we talk about on this channel, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. Also, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me in the store on Instagram, and let me know in the comment section what you want me to cover next. Now, before we get into any of the technology, let's go over some of the specs. The Vanguard Pro Invicta is 16 and a half inches long with a five and a half inch handle. It has a 16 millimeter core and weighs between 7.8 and 8.2 ounces, which is a huge range. The target swing weight is 113 and the twist weight is 5.65. And by the way, I'm only talking about the Invicta today, not the Epic, which has Selkirk standard wide body shape. Now let's talk about the technology because yes, this paddle is thermoformed with a raw carbon top sheet but it has a lot more going on beyond just that, which makes it quite an interesting paddle in today's market. The big thing to note here is that unlike those original Gen 2 thermoform paddles, there are actually three more layers of 12K carbon fiber between the core and the top sheet. Those layers are there to provide multi-directional support when the paddle pockets the ball, which is supposed to enhance certain aspects of the power spin and control game. I know that sounds a little buzzwordy, and to be fair, marketing usually is, but I did get pretty excited when I read that because it sounds similar and looks similar to what Chorus has going on with the Shapeshifter, and that's a phenomenal paddle with great adaptive characteristics. This paddle also has Selkirk's X5 Plus Honeycomb core, which is an industry-leading core in terms of feel and sweet spot size. It was basically the Vanguard Control's only redeeming factor relative to the competition. It also has foam-injected sidewalls, which is pretty standard stuff at this point. Now let's dive into its playability because there is a lot to talk about. As usual, I like to start off these reviews with how the paddle actually feels when it makes contact with the ball because that always helps me explain its other characteristics like power, spin, and control. This paddle has a very unique feel to it. Not only is it the first raw carbon thermoformed Selkirk paddle, but it's also the first Selkirk paddle that has an adaptive quality to the way it pockets the ball. The Vanguard Pro feels super plush in the soft game, actually softer than the Vanguard Control, which isn't even thermoformed, and that's really impressive because usually thermoformed paddles are a little more rigid. They've clearly done a good job of engineering those four layers of carbon to cushion the ball more than one or two layers could alone. As I was warming up in the kitchen, I thought, okay, this is a true control paddle, but then it really surprised me when I sped things up. It feels way stiffer when you move the paddle face quickly through contact. As you make your way through those carbon layers, it feels like you eventually reach an end point that's kind of like a firm wall, which is there to more efficiently transfer power into the ball. It's almost like first it's soft, then it's thermoformed. Honestly, it may be the paddle that I've tested that has the most variance in terms of how it feels between a soft and a firm shot, definitely more than something like the Shapeshifter, for example. So its adaptability is fantastic, and you'll see later that definitely helps with other performance characteristics. But in terms of the actual connection you have for the ball, I have to say there is something a little bit standard about the feel here. I'm talking specifically about the feedback the paddle transfers into your hand, independent of how soft or firm it feels. It's just a little bit more muted than the way some other adaptive paddles feel. Kevlar, for example, provides a really premium rich feel that gives you a ton of feedback. And on the Shapeshifter, because it has that layer of fiberglass, you get a little more of a springy feel when you make good contact, which helps dial you into the sweet spot. I think the slightly lackluster feel here comes down to the fact that this paddle is made from straight carbon and nothing else, and that there are a lot of layers before you make contact with the core. Good feel isn't the most important thing for performance, but it does provide an addictive factor that you can use to dial yourself into the paddle even more, kind of like I was just saying with the Shapeshifter. Now, if this paddle is a little bit average for feel, it certainly makes up for that in sweet spot size, the Vanguard Pro Invicta has an enormous sweet spot. A lot of that comes down to the X5 Plus core, which does a great job of making the whole paddle more forgiving in general, but that core works really well with the carbon layup on this paddle specifically. The carbon is so flexible here that you can make contact pretty much anywhere along the face and still get a nice soft feel in the touch game. 
Compared directly to the Vanguard Control, which already has a pretty big sweet spot, this is noticeably bigger. It's pretty awesome, and the benefits don't stop there. Of course, because this paddle is thermoformed, when you do activate its firmer feel, swinging big, it stays more sturdy on off-center hits. I also just quickly want to touch on this Invicta shape, because it is a little bit different to a lot of the other elongated paddles on the market right now. Obviously, it has a more rectangular design than the arrow curve shape you'll find on something like the Yola Hyperion, Rhombus R1, or Volare Mach 1, but it also has a slightly longer paddle face than what you'll find on something like a Perseus or a Filth. There's just a little more surface area here than on the average elongated paddle, and while that does make it slightly less aerodynamic, it also plays its part in making the paddle more forgiving. I think if I had to pick the best characteristic on this Invicta, it would be that sweet spot. It really is huge, probably bigger than anything I've tried that doesn't have foam in the core, and that benefits you massively in the control game. Despite technically being a Gen 2 thermoform paddle, the Vanguard Pro Invicta is a true control paddle. The fact that it's so soft in the touch game sets it apart from most of the paddles coming out nowadays. Like I mentioned earlier, it cushions the ball a lot, which gives you really long dwell time to grab and guide it wherever you want to place it, and the fact that the sweet spot is so big just makes controlling it even easier. I was testing this alongside the Rhombus Ripple, and the difference is night and day. The main thing here is that the Ripple also has a long dwell time, but adds energy to the ball. This soaks up all that energy, allowing you full control over where you want to place it. Now what I like most about this paddle in the control game is that it is super soft, but unlike Gen 1 raw carbon paddles that were soft but not thermoformed, this is still extremely responsive. Those paddles were soft and did cushion the ball, but because they had seams and flaws in their construction, they tended to be a little bit wimpy, mushy, and not all that consistent. The Vanguard Pro combines soft and responsive, kind of like the Lux Control Air, and that provides a really consistent feel in the control game, which I loved when hitting drops and resets. It also made my chip returns a lot easier. Now, if you did watch that Ripple review, you'll know I said that that paddle shot the ball out with so much power that I was overpowering my returns. It was kind of the opposite here. I was able to use that softness to feel the ball sink into the paddle and then push it as deep as I wanted without worrying that it would go too deep if I accidentally added a little too much wrist action. It's funny, even when they do dip their toe into more mainstream technology, Selkirk always seems to stay true to its control-oriented ways, and honestly, they may not generate the same buzz as they used to, but it's nice we still have a company pushing hard in this direction. Control is king here. Everything is easy when you try to hit a soft margin shot, which is not something I can say about a lot of the paddles coming out nowadays, but with that said, it's certainly not bad for power. When I said that this paddle probably has the biggest variance between a soft and a powerful shot, that's mainly because it's so darn soft, but it also does pack quite a punch. When you swing big and tap into that firmer feel, the paddle is able to very efficiently transfer power from your stroke into the ball. It's quite cool, it's like the whole time you're making contact, you think it's soft and you're not going to get any power, then right as it exits, you're like, wow, all of a sudden it's stiff and powerful, and that's definitely unexpected at first. The slight issue with power is that you do have to get the paddle face moving pretty quickly to activate that stiffer feel, so power doesn't come really easily with little effort. Because of that, pop isn't all that high and not really competitive with the elite poppy paddles in today's industry, so if you do want to put points away at the net, you're going to have to swing pretty hard yourself. If you just stick the paddle out or flick at the ball without a ton of force, the ball will kind of just land into your opponent's court and they'll pick it up pretty easily. The good news is that despite having a lot of surface area, the swing weight is pretty low, so it is fairly easy to get this paddle moving to generate more pop at the net. I actually had no issues putting away points when I had a little more time to set up my volleys. It was only when I had to react super quickly that I wished the paddle could help me out a little more. And I do just want to say, if you've tried foam paddles or even some of the other really impressive power paddles that have generated a lot of hype recently, this isn't going to wow you for power, but that's not how you should look at it. This is first and foremost a control paddle. It's way easier to control than a lot of those, and the fact that it still has decent power is more of a bonus that makes it really well-rounded. Spin is kind of the X factor in pickleball. You can have a really powerful paddle. If it's not spin friendly, you'll never be able to control it. You can have a really good control paddle. If it has no spin, then you'll have a really one dimensional game. That's why it's so important that all the paddles coming out nowadays be really spin friendly. 
And the good news is this paddle has great spin potential. This is what I was most curious about when I first got it because I saw that the carbon face looked a lot like the shape shifters. So I was really hopeful because that paddle is fantastic for spin, especially soft spin. It's a very similar story with the Vanguard Pro Invicta. You get that really long dwell time to load up on spin, but then as you snap the face through contact, you hit that firmer, more responsive feel, which transfers spin efficiently into the ball. I really like to test the limits and see what these good soft spin paddles are capable of. And it was pretty awesome how easily I could generate those brutal dipping soft spin shots here. It also helps that this paddle is really light because usually this Invicta shape can feel a little clunky and it's definitely not as quick as the Ripple I was testing alongside it but it's still fast enough thanks to that low swing weight. Speaking of the Ripple, you have to remember that I was going back and forth between these two, and that is by far the best paddle I've ever tested for powerful spinny drives. This paddle is not on the same level for that type of shot, but really no other paddle is right now, and it still impressed me big time from the baseline. I'd probably still put it a slight notch under Kevlar paddles, but comparing it to other elite soft control paddles, it's higher than most, higher than the Lux Control Airs, the Bread and Butter Fat Boy, and much higher than the Vanguard Controls. Spinny volleys were also really easy. This provides a ton of purchase over the ball to scoop and pop it through your opponent's court. So yes, spin is top tier on the Vanguard Pro Invicta, and that was probably the most important characteristic for them to nail if they wanted this to be considered a serious paddle, so I'm glad they did. It's funny to me, this paddle is probably going to fly under the radar because there's not that much visual or technological that's going to generate a lot of hype the way some other paddles coming out right now have, but that's completely on Selkirk. They've been so set in their ways and kind of snobby about paddle evolution and clearly not willing to make a paddle that's consistent with market trends, and yet this paddle has a lot of those modern elements while still staying true to their philosophy. It's not just a Gen 2 thermoform paddle that's come out two years late, it has some great unique playability. This much control on a paddle that's also this good for power and spin is pretty awesome. It's elite for an all-court game, but really comes into its own for any type of play in and around the kitchen. And because of that, I think a lot of players will like it, or at least a lot of players should try it because it could improve their game. I can't emphasize how important it is to have some sort of soft game in pickleball. You can feel great going for all-out power and spin, and you'll beat players worse than you play in that way. But as soon as you come up against someone your level and they see that you're one-dimensional, they'll cook you in the soft game. Foam paddles are great in the right hands, but the difference between a control paddle like this and a power paddle like those is that this makes the soft game easier, those don't. If you don't have touch, foam paddles will punish you to the point where you're just bashing the ball and eventually you'll get burned for that. That's obviously not to say don't buy a foam paddle because I do still think they are objectively the best performers right now, but when you're trying one out, take something like this along with it and be honest with yourself as to which one you play better with. Personally, I wouldn't use it over something like the Ripple because I have found my soft game on that paddle, but this really impressed me. With that said, that is going to be the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that if you do want to demo the Vanguard Pro Invicta, you can come visit us in store, or if you want to buy it, you can go online at racketsandrunners.ca.